How you doing, guys? Uh, today I was trying to think of something to write a null shell post on, or at least uh, bring some content out with, and that really kind of got the thoughts rolling for a little bit. And now that it's Monday and my week has gotten started, I've been a little bit distracted with school, so I haven't really been able to write code. But, you know, that isn't going to stop me from thinking about code. I did, however, need to sort some sort of topic out to be able to bring you guys. I, need, I needed a topic, and uh, so I tried to brainstorm a little bit. Obviously, I haven't been able to do any work with uh, C++ now that the week has began, but I still wanted to post an update. So, I mean, Null Shell came to mind. I started thinking about the structure, the interface, and the design for, like, viewing the, bo the blog posts. Uh, the small little implementation I had yesterday, I added last night, and all that jazz. I tried thinking through the way I had JavaScript and PHP handle the sidebar and that sort of thing, which had kind of reminded me of the few principles and the way that it worked. So, how does it all happen on the back end? Well, the way their slide bar actually gets the dates of these posts is by a sort of like a naming convention the file name. It, uh, it looks through the directory containing the posts, it grabs each file name and then sorts them out in chronicle order, and, and like inside of an array, so viewing is made easily. It gets the name of each post by actually opening, opening up the file and searching for the uppermost uh, header 2 tag. Then the PHP code grabs that information and it uses it for the title or the identifier for that specific post, and it just adds it to the list, uh, like the in inside the array. It organizes all these things in an unordered list, and then, like in HTML, and then jQuery and JavaScript work to make it slide and make it more visually appealing, and yada yada yada. But the way it retrieves the date is kind of a curious thing, though, because you can see an evident date timestamp at the top of each post, but on the right-hand side, like in purple or something. So, what if I, as the author, were to ever make a mistake and give the post real and give the real post date, not the file name, but the thing that you see in the top right? What if I gave that the incorrect timestamp? What if, like, maybe? What if maybe I was trying to modify? a different post as like a skeleton for a new one, and what if I forgot to change the timestamp? I'm not really planning on rewriting the entire sidebar template code just to grab the date by looking through the file as well. That seems a little unnecessary, because, I mean, the, the file name is crucial to begin with. But I am looking to see if I can prevent possible, like, dating errors with that file name concept. So, how would we set this up? Well, it seems kind of simple enough in JavaScript. All you have to do is select the element and change the text. I mean, you could do that in jQuery really easily, which is like the the dollar sign inside the parentheses, the name of the element, and then like the dot text function, the dot HTML function, the dot val function. I don't really know the specific one. But anyway, even then I get this feeling that I'm depending too much on the client side of the web. I'm not really solving the problem, I'm just masking it. Because the real file isn't modified when I do that, it's just it's being displayed differently to the user, to the viewer. So JavaScript doesn't seem like a viable option to me. But what about PHP? That sort of interests me. What if we set this up in PHP? If, if we did that, we would be having the global template, like, I always include a header.php file for every single document on Null Shell, so I can include, like, the style sheet, the, the navigation, yada yada yada. And, but that would examine the current document for that header 2 tag and start looking for a specific span inside that that has a certain ID. So that way I'm able to identify, okay, this is the date, uh, and this needs to have that purple color. It should be mixed with the header 2 tag, yada, yada, yada. It just makes it easier for CSS, but I still need that inside the HTML, and I'd be using that to grab it from PHP. But it doesn't correspond with the date that we see from the process file name data. We would change that to what we want. But grabbing the element in PHP isn't as easy if it were done in JavaScript, though. We can't just select an instance. We have to, we can't just select that instance specifically. We'd have to process some strings to be able to find the right position. And this would be just looking through it in like the HTML tags, yada yada yada. Except we'd be using that in real strings, using like the string position function, the substring function, yada yada yada. But do you remember that structure, though? We had the header 2 tag, and then we had the span tag inside that, and that span had a specific date identification. So those are a couple of variables that we should keep track of. To make things extensible, though, we should probably, like, set up a conditional test whether or not the identifier variable that we're looking for ex actually exists or if it's an empty string. So if I just happen to change the, that date ID in like the CSS file or the way things work entirely in all my documents, which is very unlikely, but I should make it instinctable in case anyone else uses this code, you know. So if it isn't, we should look for HTML tags that don't have an ID if, it, if that string isn't set, if the ID isn't set. So... The idea in algorithm so far, though, doesn't even account for the parent element of that header 2 tag. If we wanted to be as precise as we can be, we should incorporate that into the code and logic as well. But we would still be looking for the string. If, it, if the string that we're looking for, if, it's, if the date is okay, if it's what we want, and if that's what we see inside the file name, if they both correspond, that's fine. That's good. That's what we want. But if it isn't, we would have to open up the current file in PHP 
like we would use probably a server variable like a script name or something, and we would have to change that information on the fly. We would be reading that current file in to modify it. Scriptception. <laughs> I think I called it that in Python a couple days back or so, but just that idea of opening the current script and modifying it and then having to have to run it again. But that still comes to my mind, though. What what will be passed to the user? What will they actually see in their browser? Will they see the new version of the page or the old version? So to avoid some flops or to avoid some confusion, or at least one person isn't the only person that sees the error, I'm thinking we would have to refresh the page. But how would we do that in PHP? Is that as simple as like resetting the location with like the header the header functions? I don't know. I, I'd have to refresh myself in PHP. But so far, this seems like a valuable idea or something that we could actually do. Uh, but at the same time, I don't know. It is just an idea. <laughs> it's something I could work with to make my life easier later on. And automation is better, you know. An, an ambitious programmer that works to make himself a lazy programmer is a good programmer. And that's kind of the idea and the mindset that I want to leave you guys with today. <laughs>